So a couple weeks back, I did a long-term review of the Apple Watch Ultra. And while I personally loved it and would recommend it, I know that because of its price tag, it won't be the Apple Watch for most people. But lately, I've been playing around with this little guy, the Apple Watch SE2, and this is the one. I think most people should get. And I say that because I do have a unique perspective of having used the Apple Watch Ultra for a couple months. My regular Apple Watch is the Apple Watch Series 7. Both of those watches have a bigger display and more features than this SE2, but I'm all about the best bang for your buck. And I think that this SE2 offers that up. Now, throughout this review, I'm not gonna compare this SE2 to the Apple Watch Ultra. I think that's kind of comparing apples to oranges. Instead, I'm gonna try to compare it more towards my Apple Watch Series 7 or the Apple Watch Series 8, kind of the newer Apple Watches that are just one step above this SE2 in terms of features and price, because I think most people are trying to decide, should I upgrade to the Series 7 or Series 8, or will the Apple Watch SE2 be enough for me? So first let's start out with design. And if you're at all worried that people are gonna look at you from a normal distance, see your watch and know that you got the cheaper watch, don't be. This thing is almost indistinguishable from the Series 8 from a normal distance. It has nearly the exact same design, albeit a little bit smaller. But again, from a normal distance, you're not gonna be able to notice the size difference. It has the same scroll wheel, microphone, and button on one side, and then the speakers on the other, just like the Series 8 and Series 7. It has aluminum sides, just like the Series 8. However, there is a kind of a big change on the back the Series 8 and Series 7 have ceramic backs, while the SE2 has an all-aluminum frame. Again, not a big deal. This is something that's going to be sitting on your wrist, so no one's going to see that change, and you probably won't feel a difference either. However, the all-aluminum frame does make this a little bit lighter, with this 44mm SE2 coming in at 33 grams, and the 45mm Series 8 coming in at nearly 39 grams. And I thought my Series 7 was light, but holy cow, is this SE2 just feather light. Something you immediately forget is even on your wrist. Now, when it comes to the display, this is something you might notice a little bit more if you've ever used an Apple Watch Series 7 or Series 8. The Apple Watch SE2 has a similar display to the Apple Watch Series 6 with the 40 and 44 millimeter options, whereas the Apple Watch Series 8 and Series 7 have a larger display with thinner bezels. Coming from a Series 7 myself, could I notice a huge difference? Uh, I mean, in some cases, maybe. Specifically some watch faces and just a couple apps, but I would say for the most part, the difference isn't major. One thing that might be major is the always on display option specifically the SE2 does not have one, whereas the Series 7 and Series 8 do. This is totally a preference thing, and for me personally, I just don't really use the always-on display. I'd much rather just have better battery life, and I'm totally fine just lifting up my wrist to see the time or a notification. But other than that, the displays are very similar. They're both OLED. They both have very similar pixels per inch. They both get up to a thousand nits of brightness. They both have great colors and contrast. Both are just really enjoyable to use. When it comes to speakers and microphones, honestly, I think the speaker on the SE2 might be a little bit louder and more full sounding than my Apple Watch Series 7. The difference is really slight, but when I put them side by side and ask Siri a question, she does sound slightly louder on the SE2. When it comes to microphones, I've had no trouble making and receiving calls on this. Siri hears me perfectly every time, so those seem to work really well too. Okay, let's talk about health tracking. On the SE2, you get activity tracking, workout tracking, heart rate tracking. You get the notifications for abnormally high or low heart rate, cycle tracking, fall and noise detection, crash detection, and you get the sleep tracking. A couple things that are notably missing from the SC2 are the blood oxygen sensor and the ECG sensor. But honestly, if you're even considering the SC2, you're probably like me where you don't necessarily need those sensors. They might be nice to have and use occasionally, but they aren't essential. And that's basically how I feel about them. When I use my Series 7, I really don't use those sensors much. Maybe once a week, maybe. And oftentimes I just forget that they're even on the watch. So by all means, if you have a heart condition that you need to monitor, or if you have a cardiovascular condition or something that might affect your blood blood O2 levels, then upgrade and get the Series 7 or Series 8. But I think for everyone else, I don't think you're going to miss those sensors all that much. The other thing to note is that the new temperature sensor isn't on the SE2 either for detailed ovulation tracking. Obviously for guys, that's not a big deal. For women, I asked my wife about this and she said that women typically know their bodies better than what a watch would tell them, but obviously some women might find this useful. But all the rest of the health features are still there. When you do a workout on Watch OS 9, you still get the in-depth information like what heart zone you're in. You can look at your rings. The GPS connects nice and fast and is very accurate in my testing. You get the more in-depth sleep tracking, kind of all the essential things you need to get a good overview of your health. As far as battery goes, I'm seeing about the same battery life as my Apple Watch Series 7, meaning typically a day and a half, maybe two days if I'm not using it much, but that's pretty standard for almost all the Apple Watches except for the Ultra. Now, obviously this is depending on usage. If you have the brightness all the way up and you use GPS a lot, or if you're in and out of apps throughout the day, you can expect less battery life than that, but I would say an average user can 
can get about a day and a half. Now this does have the low battery mode, which essentially turns off all non-critical functions of the watch and can extend your battery life by half a day, sometimes up to a day, which is really nice if you're away from a charger for a while. Now the bummer is that they didn't add fast charging to this, so it definitely takes longer to charge up the battery. Again, this was just kind of a nice feature to have, but for me it's not a deal breaker. I think most people can find an hour or two throughout the day where they can charge this up. And when it comes to just everyday usage, I think this is where it shines. Apple put the new S8 dual core processor in the SE2, which is the same chip as they put in the Series 8. And this chip, along with watchOS 9, keeps this thing blazing fast. The UI is just super smooth. There's no lags, there's no hiccups. Going in and out of apps are super fast. Apps load up very quick. I was having no problems on my Apple Watch Series 7, but even just using this one, I feel like it's even faster than my Series 7. So even if the design feels just a little bit dated, this chip definitely makes up for it. And because it's the newest chip on the market, it will get updates well into the future. So this is something you can definitely keep around for years to come. And honestly, the chip and the software are what really makes this watch great in my opinion. There's so many watches out there that look good on paper they have great specs really nice displays and a great design but you start using them and you realize how bad the software is the se2 is kind of the opposite where it has a slightly dated design not bad by any means but certainly not the best of the best but the internals and the software are what really makes it shine and that to me is why it's the watch for most people especially when you factor in the price at 279 dollars us and you can even find it on sale for cheaper it's the perfect way to get into apple watches if you've never used one before without having to spend too much money or if you're looking to upgrade from an older model like a series 4 or series 3 i think this is just a fantastic upgrade from those models just a couple minor things to note the series 8 and se2 have the same water resistance rating at 50 meters they have the same bluetooth 5.3 and only the series 8 has the ultra wideband chip in it which doesn't have a lot of uses at this point i don't consider that to be a big deal right now but that's about it guys so again i think the se2 is just a fantastic buy if you're interested in it check out the link in the description below as i always i'm super appreciative for those that watched all the way to the end if you have any questions for me about the se2 put them in the comments below and i'll get to them if you like the video make sure you press that like button subscribe for more content from me and as always i'll catch you in the next video